Audi RS3 Saloon UK 2017 Review The Audi RS3 is back and in new saloon guys. Here is our first chance to try it in the UK, but can it knock both the Mercedes-AMG A45 and BMW M2 off their perches? What is it? When Audi launched the last RS3 in 2015, some bright spark at its advertising agency, doubtless tickled pink by the thought of a hatchback with a bisected, turbocharged V10 cylinder bank under the bonnet, had the idea of showing the car being born to a tortured, sweat-covered R8 in a two-minute commercial. Setting aside its exuberant graphical detail, which inevitably and intentionally garnered mild controversy, the film is ultimately contemptible because in reality the RS3 had about as much to do with the R8 as Bhutan did with the birth of rhythm and blues. Sure, it possessed 362 bhp and permanent all-wheel drive and could scorch from origin A to epilogue B in the time it takes to read an emoji, but its relationship to Neckar some space frame, mid-engined master stroke stopped at a few shared chromosomes in the engine bay. Where the R8 was taut like a bowstring and just about as biddable, the RS3 stayed permanently riveted to the same old set of notes. Its replacement only really breaks the mold in one sense, alongside the familiar sport back flavor, Audi has opted to make it available as a saloon, too. On paper at least, the decision ought to be as stymieing to the model's desirability as having the bodywork made of placenta. The recent introduction of the Mercedes-AMG CLA45 notwithstanding, compact saloons have typically proven about as popular in the UK as Root Canal, Think Volkswagen Jetta or the Skoda Rapid or the Vauxhall Belmont. But think again. Those models were viewed with withering suspicion because they looked funny, a symptom of putting a longer, three-box body on a comparatively skinny car. The RS3 is emphatically not skinny. Versus the A3, it has had its front track widened by 20mm and its rear by 14mm. And even if it had not, the car's substantial 19 in wheels and dramatized styling would likely ensure that its proportions appear agreeable. Consequently, there's a harmonious, hockey puck poise about the saloon that harks back to the B7 generation of RS4, coincidentally, one of the models that helped forge Neckarsum's current reputation for a certain kind of steroidal road car. In that respect, the new RS3 has been treated to another round of under-the-skin injections. Its output, already deliriously jacked, has now been increased to 395 bhp, meaning that, in metric terms, at least Ingolstadt can claim to have introduced 400 horsepower to a hot hatch for the first time. When it means first, of course what Audi really means is before Mercedes-AMG and BMW managed it. The fact that the Cosworth Impresis TCS 400 was producing 395 bhp almost a decade ago, and the Mitsubishi Lancer Revolution XFQ 440 even earlier, is about as distant from Ingolstadt's radar as the output of Caterham, Morgan or Lego Technic. What's it like? The power comes, still, from the half-pint V10, Audi Sport having again made an overhaul of the 2.5-liter 5-pot the focus of its efforts. Alongside the obvious muscle gain, the engineers have merciless slashed away at the engine's paunch, fitting a magnesium sump and replacing the iron block with a lighter weight alloy alternative. Alt old, the RS3's front axle has been unburdened to the tune of 26 kilograms. The sport back now weighs 1510 kilograms, the saloon 1515 kilograms, moderately less than a Mercedes AMG A45 or even a rear drive BMW M2. An Audi S3 saloon, the RS3's authentic closest living relative, is 45 kilograms lighter still on paper and equally as satisfying to sit in, but there the comparison ends. The S3 is powered by the 2.0-liter E888 unit in its Golf R format, 
The RS3 is powered by gluttony and 12453 firing throb and a two-phase injection system that presumably unleashes a tsunami's worth of super unleaded into the manifold come 4000 revolutions per minute. In a straight line, the difference between old and new could almost be called subtle. The net effect, though, is not. The RS3, be it a saloon or smart back, remains bewilderingly fast. Fast enough from a standing start to trouble your blood flow, fast enough even to almost convince you that your phone is dropping 4G because the radio waves can't keep up. Strapped to a V-Box in 2015, the last model clocked 3.9 seconds to 60 miles per hour while two up under road test conditions, Lord knows how many fractions the latest iteration has ousted from its sprint time. Whether or not its visceral savagery is actually soul-movingly immersive is another genuine question, yet it is made to feel of middling importance by the sheer heft of the end result. Certainly, as before, the car feels huddled around its monster power train, although it is to the chassis considerable credit that it never feels remotely overawed by the additional effort. Indeed, 30-odd horsepower of additional forcefulness is folded impassively into the workings of a reportedly quicker-witted and lighter clutch plate-based Quattro system. It makes itself felt in a similar fashion to the latest RS5, in low-speed corners, a bulkhead finding amount of throttle input will have the torque manifestly vectoring to the outside rear wheel, conferring, in the wet, at least, the fleeting impression of a more sophisticated front-to-back balance. Given the RS3's previous preference for understeer, any effort to draw dynamic attention away from the, optionally, fatter front tires is to be cheered. So, too, is the mostly benign temperament of the, standard, passive suspension. Very slightly more forgiving in the saloon than in the sport back, the car rides firmly and energetically, but is rarely incessant despite an unambiguous vertical stiffness. The optional sport setup complete with Audi's familiar adaptive dampers, makes life more pleasant still with a slower rate comfort mode, although its sportiest setting is arguably too rheumatic for UK roads, making suspension choice a mildly contentious issue. More contentious still are the RS3's unresolved irritations. The steering remains a vague bugbear, over-assisted in its easier setting and still a bit fudgy and dynamic, the rack never feels a notch above adequate. That's a shame for the most obvious reason, if the car steered like a Renault Megane 275 Trophy R, it would be exponentially more involving than it currently is. The 7-speed Destronic gearbox has its moments, too. It has supposedly been made quicker, but it's still not beyond the occasional bungled downshift or scatterbrained pull away, also. Its paddles are too small and not nearly mechanical enough in feedback to properly punctuate the kind of extravagant, full bow rub shifts that are taking place beneath you. Elsewhere, the model is handsomely equipped, in the UK, Audi's virtual cockpit system is standard, but charging £1,000 for the crucial RS Sports exhaust seems a little mean and the pop-up infotainment screen is plainly of a lesser standard than the latest Golf R's touchscreen. Screen. <laughs> 2018 Aston Martin Vantage shown in near production form. New images show the next generation, almost production ready Aston ahead of the V8 launch. These are the first pictures of the new Aston Martin Vantage, which will officially be revealed by the end of the year. The images are understood to closely resemble the final production car and show clear differences to the DB11, previously spotted Vantage mules have run underneath the body of a cut-up DB11. The baby Aston Martin is instead influenced by the DB10, designed for the James Bond movie Spectre, and the Vulcan Hypercar. The new Vantage uses a new generation of aluminium architecture that is a shortened version of the DB11s. It is expected to be lighter and more torsionally rigid than its predecessor, improving agility. The entry-level Aston will first arrive as a V8, adopting the Mercedes-AMG engine recently launched in the DB11. 
The 4.0-liter twin-turbocharged V8 is expected to produce about 500 bhp in the standard vantage. The engine is supplied as part of a technical collaboration between Aston Martin and Mercedes-AMG and will use the former's software. That extra power over the existing 430 bhp in the current V8 Vantage is set to help undercut the outgoing 0 to 62 mph time of 4.8 seconds, edging closer to 4.0 seconds the top speed will exceed 190 mph. Aston Martin is expected to offer the new Vantage with a choice of either a 6-speed manual or dual-clutch automatic transmission. Like the current Vantage, a V12 variant is also due, using the same 5.2-liter twin-turbocharged engine found in the V12 DB11. Aston Martin boss Andy Palmer has already confirmed that the new Vantage will be shown by the end of 2017, while a V12 version will arrive at a later date. A hardcore AMR-branded track car is also likely to be on the agenda. The V8 Vantage will cost slightly more than the current car's £94,995 starting price. As part of a new model blitz, all of Aston Martin's key cars will be refreshed and joined by an all-new DBX SUV and Lagunda. The electric Rapide was also confirmed earlier this year as a limited-run model to enter production in 2019.